Front page is the papers coming your way after a rundown of what else is happening. Charlotte will bring you right up to date. Thanks, Eamon. A Senate inquiry into the release of the Lockerbie bomb has been postponed because none of the invited witnesses would appear. The man behind the hearings, which were to examine links between Abdul Basset al Megrahi's release and oil deals with Libya, has accused the outgoing BP chief executive Tony Hayward of caring more about his pension than the Lockerbie victims. Greg Milam has the details. If Tony Hayward thought he was stepping out of the... That's at half past seven this morning. Now, let's hope that members of the coalition are on their best behaviour while they're in India. Take a look at this. An Indian politician has been beaten up by members of his own party. That's how a, a debate got out of hand. Sambajareo Kunji was left bloodied after being hit by chairs during a meeting to elect a new president for the Pune District Congress Committee. It does seem a bit of an extreme reaction. We're not quite sure exactly what has happened to spark that kind of reaction. Are we reaction. running this because we're shocked at this, or is this one of the funnies no, at the well, end of the news? We That's are it. shocked. Well, are we? Right. Well, there's a lot of kicks in the ballot box. Especially there going he's on. injured. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, well, there we go. Uh, right, morning newspapers. Let's have a look at those. The Financial Times. Uh, into Sky News. Uh, isn't it interesting? If, if we were in Spain, maybe I'd be throwing to you on the sports desk, Sarah Jane, with this being one of the items that, that you're talking about. So we should get some emails on this this morning, I'm Charlotte. sure we will get lots of emails. We have had some coming in already, actually. I'll go through those shortly. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people, I think, will agree with the ban. And a lot of people may not. Top stories are these on Sky News Sunrise. David Cameron in India to push for greater trade amongst expectant women. And here comes the sport. No bullfighting, but what have you got, Sergio? Uh, yeah, no bullfighting, definitely not. Uh, but Diego Maradona, he goes head-to-head -head with his bosses in Argentina. Also, the Brits, who have been... Calm. Um, Charlotte's got a dog as well, that has to be said. <laughs> We're talking about looking like your owners looking like their dogs. My dog is a very beautiful and glamorous dog, actually. <laughs> I thought it was a bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, sorry. It's just... Somebody told me Anyway, that. I don't have a dog before you all start. So anyway, we're going to be talking about that in the newspapers after a rundown of what else is happening from the beautiful and glamorous Miss Charlotte. Many thanks, Thank Eamon. You. Planned inquiry into the release of the Lockerbie bomber has been postponed. It follows the rejection of invitations to appear at the Senate by all key witnesses. Uh, here comes the papers with John Gaunt. Good to see you, John. You too, Eamon. And uh, we're starting with this, uh, this awful uh, situation where four members of the same family find dead. Yeah, this is a, a dreadful story, isn't it? And uh, my fear is we're going to see more stories like this. I mean, the papers have all got different uh, twists on this today. This is the uh, star, and they say £7,000 debt drove Dad to kill family. They reckon that uh, the wife's credit card had been stolen and fr used for fraud. This man had already been bankrupt or been in an IVA, and they say this was the final straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, <clears throat> the bottom line is we don't know the full truth of it, but it would appear that debt is behind this terrible tragedy where he killed his two beautiful uh, daughters and stabbed his wife to death and then hung himself. I mean, obviously there's personal responsibility if one gets into debt, but one's got to also question as well whether the banks and credit cards in particular who have been hiking up the interest rates just recently um, have some sort of complicity in this as well. And as I say, I think we're going to see more stories like this as the recession bites. It's dreadfully, dreadfully sad, because uh, by all accounts, you listen to the neighbours, they say these were a perfect family. Yeah. Uh, OK, John, the, uh, the coalition government delegation in India to try sure. and drum up business and uh, immigration may be an issue for them. Yeah, it will be an issue for them because, as you were reporting on Sky News, yesterday in Turkey, uh, David Cameron said he wants Turkey to be full members of uh, Europe. Uh, of course, there's the immigration question there. And in India as well, that there's going to be this cap on uh, non-European uh, immigrants into the country, which isn't going to go down well with the Indians. This is something the Indians are going to bring up today. But also, there's war within the, uh, the uh, Lib Dem and the con uh, Conservative coalition over this. Vince Cable uh, wants more 
immigration. Also, you'll remember as well, of course, uh, they had a ticket where they want an am wanted an amnesty, uh, the Lib Dems. I think this is just another sign that this coalition will not survive uh, for a great deal of time. They are diametrically opposed on major issues like immigration. And the simple facts are we do need well-controlled, managed immigration. It's been good for the country. But we can't have an open-door policy. We've got to cap it, and the sooner the better. And it ties in with my next story, really. Well, I've got a, an email here from Bob who says uh, whatever way they spin this one, the cap on immigration will be so large it will be irrelevant. Yeah. Intercompany transfers through which tens of thousands of Indian IT workers replace British IT workers will not be included. He said, same old lies from a government, no different to the previous one. That's what he said. Now, how does I that tie into I think I'd largely story? agree with that. Well, the next one's this one, a sick joke. Uh, this is uh, uh, in the papers today. It's in all the papers. 75% of people on incapacity benefits are fakers, costing £9 billion a year, if uh, we believe uh, the Daily Star today. Uh, almost 2 million incapacity benefits uh, claimants look set to be exposed as uh, scroungers. What they found out was that 40% uh, of people, when they had a medical, uh, shouldn't be getting this £89 a week extra. 40% of people, when they were told they were going to have a medical, didn't even bother turning up. Now, this is what's wrong with this is that incapacity benefit is right for people who should be getting it, and I'm not suggesting that everybody who's on it is uh, swinging the lead, but clearly, by having a two-tier benefit system, you will get people trying to play the system. And obviously, during Labour's reign, they have been playing that system, and it has to be stopped. And it ties in with the immigration, because we've got four million people on benefits, and we say we need immigrants, low-skilled immigrants, largely, because they do the jobs Brits won't do. Well, could I humbly suggest mm. we kick those people out of bed and get them to pick the strawberries and get them back to work? We need to get people back into work and our own people first in my opinion. OK. So let's talk about the dogs, then, in the Daily oh, yes. Telegraph. Yeah. The, you'll love this story. Dogs don't just look like their owners, they act like them too. And that's got to be... If you see the photograph, it's got to be the best photograph ever. Uh, these two ladies with long blonde hair. I don't know what sort of dog that is, Charlotte. It's, it's an, an Afghan hound. It's an yeah. Afghan hound. Well, it's like spot... No, anyway. Anyway, uh, they look like their dogs. But not only do they look like their dogs, there's now been this research, Eamon, that dogs can mimic you. You know, like your children, sometimes they say things back to you yes. and you know it's you speaking, That'll and therefore you can't your tell fans. them off. Charlotte, you will love that. So just tell me, does your doggy... Let's see Miss Charlotte's reaction. Her, eye, her nose has gone wet here yeah. on well, this. I think the thing is, my husband would probably say there is some truth in it, because he thinks that our dog is a bit contrary at times and he swears that she takes after what? me on occasions. What kind of dog is it? She's a terrier cross, a rescue dog, oh. so a bit of a bit of all sorts, really. But yeah, she's definitely a character. A character. Well, they do. They Those say. Don't mind. They say. <laughs> they say here. This vet here. They were trying to get this dog to eat. It wouldn't eat. Uh, but basically, one of the vet, vet's nurses lay down on the floor and, and pretended she was eating out of the bowl. The dog then got the idea and did it. So uh, now, now, now you've got to be careful what you say, not only in front of your children but how you act but in, in front fr of your pooch. In front of your dog. OK. Mm. Are you going to tell us what type of dog you do I've have? got a Labrador, cos it's a cliché, I've got the... a golden uh, Labrador, mm -hmm. which eats everything, including, at one point, our baby's nappy. OK. John, see you again in an, in an hour's time. <laughs> thank, thank you very much indeed. Do you look like your dog? Does your dog imitate your habits? Please do let us know today. Adi Eamon Holmes at Sky Charlotte and news at sky.com. Getting some news coming in from Pakistan just in the last few minutes. Uh, we hear there's a plane crash there. The most unlikely people like the A-team. Look at this lot here. <laughs> we and all so swooped in as soon as were. we saw Bradley Cooper. Bradley Walsh. Bradley Cooper. Oh, right. <laughs> Two totally different people. <laughs> OK. And Sarah Jane was just saying she thought that we should change our theme tune music to have the A-team. Yeah, I think that yeah. would be a good theme tune for some of course, I would be Hannibal, for a Well, I was going to say, we've yeah. just had an email here saying I think Eamon should have played Hannibal in the A-team. He'd so suit the role really well, so there you go. Yeah, cos I'm the only one with a plan around here. Which <laughs> Not allowed a cigar on set, yeah. though. <laughs> which reminds me, what have you got sports-wise? Uh, right, the headlines this morning, sports-wise, Britain's Mo Farah has set his sights on a long-distance double at the Athletics European Championships. Farah won gold in the quarterfinals. Uh, some people say bullfighting's a sport, Charlotte. Uh, yeah, but quite a few people disagreeing this morning. Jay Kidman saying bullfighting is barbaric. I, for one, refuse to visit Spain because of this. How has this cruel sport been allowed to continue for so many decades in the modern world? It's shameful. But Lloyd says, I watched my first bullfight when I was 16. If numbers are gradually getting lower, then it will end by natural choice, not by enforcement. And he says, let them continue. I think it's always interesting when the bull fights back, doesn't it? Jumps the fence there and frightens a few people. 
But uh, there we go. We're going to talk more about that with John Gaunton's newspaper review in about 45 minutes time. Uh, right now we're going to talk about the weather situation. We're all looking for a bit of a cool breeze, Lucy. We are in the south, aren't we? It's been so hot, so clammy and sticky the last few days. Really uncomfortable and muggy. All change over the next few days. Much fresher. That will mean temperatures drop a few degrees. But it will mean some sunshine too. Uh, let's get a rundown now of what else has happened. And Charlotte's got those details out of the front pages of the papers right after this. Thanks, Eamon. A Senate inquiry into the release of the Lockerbie bomber has been postponed because none of the invited witnesses would appear. The man behind the hearings, which were to examine links between Abdul Basit Al Megrahi's release and oil deals with Libya, accused the outgoing BP chief executive Tony Hayward of caring more about his pension than the Lockerbie victims. Greg Milam has the details. If Tony Hayward thought he was stepping out.